Okay, so we are here with Ranger Hollowell today. There he is. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Floyd Bennett Field. Yeah. The National Recreation Area. <laughs> yes, and this is one of the guest rooms. This would be a um, a dormitory for a pilot. Who yes, this would have been used back in the 1930s, back when there was very little to no night flying, especially passenger flights. You did not fly at light or at night simply because it was considered too dangerous. So the pilots would overnight here, and in this room, you had two beds, two dressers, a bathroom, and they would stay overnight until the next day when they would take off on their flight to wherever they happened to be going. Uh, and then later, once the Navy took over in 1941, this would have been used as office space, by, by which function, which office in the Navy, not entirely sure. But this was certainly in use during the Second World War, right up until 1971, when the Navy moved out and Gateway National Recreation Area was created. Wow, great. Well, um, excellent. Just, let me just do a quick little look around to okay. see here. We have yeah a, uh, a private bath. And this was the entrance here. OK, whoops. Didn't mean to zoom that. All right, great. So what's in what's in here? Um, that is another dormitory room. Okay. It's the same kind of setup. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful view. And all of this is going to be restored. We're actually getting ready to begin the restoration of this room and this floor of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and this will be the second phase of what's going to be a three-phase restoration. So wow. um, most of this room, most of the rooms on this floor will be uh, used for National Park Service office space, uh, but we are going to preserve or restore one of the dormitory rooms and open it for visitors so that people can come and see what that would have been like back in the 1930s. Excellent. This well, this would be the corner office. Do you know which room you're going to preserve yet, or do you? That decision has not been made yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there are several good candidates, though. This room oh, okay. certainly being one of them. Right. Well, this I think that there, there's going to be a fight for office space for this room. <laughs> I think. I think you might be right. All right. Yeah, we may have to. Uh, now what? The boss that. Um, he might be better off in another another room. <laughs> okay, what are those two empty hangers? Are those um, empty? Those? Um, they are not, well, they're, they're sort of empty. <laughs> okay. Uh, the hanger to your right, hanger number four, right. is actually um, still in use. We use that as, as sort of the home for our boating programs, our kayaking and sailing. Okay, right. Um, hanger three is currently not in use. And mm -hmm. then the hangers behind those, hangers one and two, um, are actually going to be a metering station for a natural gas pipeline. And, wow. And uh, those hangers, uh, the exteriors, are going to be restored. So, like uh, hangar seven and eight that we saw coming. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Are they, are the they, sports you going to use the same contractor, maybe? I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't know that those contracts have even gone out yet. Okay. Yeah, because they did a beautiful job. Okay. Well, it's nice when you have a, a great template to start from. That is. You have a nice example. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Rolling. Okay. This is kind of a cool spot. Which tells us a little bit about the, the uh, not so much flight, but the way life was back in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. This was the upstairs maid's apartment. Oh, how fabulous. So they had full maid service for the pilots who were staying overnight, and they gave her a nice little apartment with its own oh. bathroom, closet. Nice job, nice yeah. perks. Yeah, bedroom, bedroom and slash parlor. Right. So, does this open this little closet? Uh, I think, give it a tug. No, no, it's stuck. Oh, oh there, no, I, got there I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh wow, wow. So you had a little, little dressing chair there. 
Well, I, I don't think that's original. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I know, but... And how high does it go? All the way. Oh, my God. Look at all that closet space. Nice. So, if you think about it in terms of today's New York real estate, this right. would probably be a nice little one-bedroom apartment. Oh, absolutely not. Beautiful closet. I mean... Mm -hmm. you, have the, you have the nice big closet. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you for letting me open that door. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow, nice. Nice. Okay. Basically, all you need is your... Have this be your, your kitchen slash living room, and then your, your bedroom would be back there. Also fairly good size. With views. I mean, yes. it, you, you not only get these beautiful rooms, you get magnificent views. Yes. I mean, one room is like cooler than the next. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, you know, the west view out into Dead Horse Bay. Now, tell us, I was trying to um, describe what Dead Horse Bay is. Were they, do they really get rid of horses? Yes. They did. Yeah. Okay, and they were, it was a glue factory or it was just horses, maybe carriage horses? Yeah, it was. A, a place where you could deal with the disposing of, of the animals. Exactly. And it was, you know, up until really the 1930s, horses were still a very common way of transporting things around the city. Of course, horses don't live forever. Right. So what was out here um, on Barren Island, which was the original island that Floyd Bennett Field was added to by landfill, um, right. There were, were horse rendering plants, and they would get all sorts of different products from the horse's carcasses. Mm -hmm. Leather from the skins, uh, you would get glycerin from the fats, um, right. fertilizers, all sorts of different things. And once they had gotten every product out of the carcass that they could, then the bones would just be thrown into the water. And that's where the name Dead Horse Bay comes from. Mm -hmm. We still find horse bones all the time. Really? Like what, what, do you go out there to just do like regular maintenance checks or like what is, you don't really have any affiliation with the Dead Horse Bay. Oh, sure we do. That's oh, you do. Park, oh, the, oh, okay. So yeah, you go out there to just make sure that it's, yeah, and we, we you do, know, we do you do tours. Out there, sure. Oh, okay. Um, we do a lot, of, a lot of our education programs are done out there. Oh, I didn't know. Is that where the kayaking program? Yeah, yeah we do a lot of kayaking out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, well, I didn't know that's where it took place, but of course it makes perfect sense. And then also um, we have uh, it's school and youth group sailing, teaching right. kids, you know, city kids, mm -hmm. giving them sort of an introduction on how, how to operate a small... And that's Jamaica Bay? Um, yeah, well actually Jamaica Bay is on the other side of the field. Oh, okay. Yeah, this so is this Dead is... Dead Horse Bay and oh, okay. Rockaway Inlet. Rock, okay, so is that the tip of the um, Rockaway Peninsula right there? Yes, that's the Breezy Point. Breezy Point, okay, yes. so you guys must have really been hit hard with Hurricane Sandy. Not here. Really? Yes. In fact, this is where I rode the storm out. Really? Yeah. Oh, it must have been awesome. It well, it was awesome and terrifying. Yeah, I bet it was. I mean, did the water come up over the highway and was no. it no, it didn't? No. Wow. Because the storm was coming from the east, so everything mm -hmm. was being pushed out that way. The other side of the field got hit fairly hard, but this side not so much. Mm -hmm. And the other really amazing thing mm -hmm. is that we never lost power here. We never lost internet. We never lost lights. We never lost phones. We lost nothing in this building. Wow. So. I think we may have run out of tape. Okay. I, need, I need to do a tape change. Sure. Okay. That's good. All right. Welcome to the control tower here at Floyd Bennett Field. Um, this would have been, of course, New York's first control tower. Uh, and 
this is really kind of a great spot for a variety of reasons. First of all, it gives you a sense of where we are in the city. Right. We're down here at the edge of Jamaica Bay, which is out to the east. Right. There's there's New York City or out there. There's, yeah, there's the Manhattan skyline. Okay. It is a beautiful clear day. Okay. Little, there it is. little trivia for you. The Empire State Building and Floyd Bennett Field both opened the same year, 1931. Wow. So the day that uh, tower operations started up here, they would have been looking at this same building. Very similar skyline. Mm hmm. And uh, Hangar 5 and 6, what's happening there? That is also part of the uh, Aviator Sports Complex. Aviator okay. operates out of four of the original hangars here at Florida. Okay, Field. great space. It is, it's fantastic. Okay, and out here is Dead Horse Bay. Yes. And okay, so we are looking west here. We're looking west. Okay. Uh, in the foreground you see Dead Horse Bay and the Gateway Marina which leads out into the Rockaway Inlet, and then way off in the right. distance there, you're looking at Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Wow. Okay, so you really can get quite a view. Yeah, now, in sort of in the mid-foreground there uh, is the Rockaway Peninsula, Breezy Point. Okay, right. Now they got hit with Sandy. I don't know how you re yes. remain unscathed, but Breezy Point. I mean, it, th that looks like park all the way along well, there. Part of it is part of, of, of the park. Um, mm -hmm. The Breezy Point community is an inholding which predates the creation of Gateway National Recreation Area. So mm -hmm. the land immediately to the east and west of the Breezy Point Co-op is all part of Gateway. What's in between belongs to the uh, to the Breezy Point Co-op Association. Okay. So, but yeah, they really did get hit hard by Sandy. Um, in fact, um, while I was here during the storm it, that night, the phone rang, and the person on the other end said, "Breezy Point is burning. Is there anything you can do?" And of course, there wasn't. Right, I mean. But from up here, um, it was sort of eerie because every, everywhere around us was dark. The storm was raging all around. Right. And yet you could see the fires burning and mm -hmm. flames were shooting up pretty high. So and pretty, you could see it from here? You could see absolutely, it? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was pretty, pretty frightening. And there were three pretty good sized fires going on over in Rockaway. There was the Breezy Point fire. Uh -huh. There was a fire um, a little further east over um, what used to be the Harbor Lights pub and several houses along there. So it was, yeah. It, the storm itself was devastating, but what the storm caused was even worse. Wow. So, right. That was some. Yeah, what is this um, bridge over here? What What is that? That is the Marine Parkway Gil Hodges Memorial Bridge. And it okay. connects uh, Brooklyn via Flatbush Avenue to the Rockaway Peninsula in Queens. Okay, so the Q35 goes over that bridge. Yes, the Q35 okay. goes over that bridge and you can take it to the beach. That Well, we saw people with beach chairs mm -hmm. getting on the bus and I did look at the route and I saw what a cool way to get to the beach yes. that is. So mm -hmm. certainly something to keep in mind for future planning. Absolutely. If you're looking for a, a quick, quick day getaway, yep. all you need is a metric card. Okay, yeah. So um, here in the tower here, these, this is where all the uh, air traffic was controlled? Yes, yes. This would have been um, where all, all the air traffic uh, would have communicated with the airplanes They're in the early days, radios were not mandatory, so... It, <laughs> uh, so how did they, they just did visual checks? It was visual and you would also use light signals. Now later on when radios became standard and mandatory equipment on, on aircraft, then you'd have two-way radio com communications between the tower and the planes. And then of course once radar is introduced and 
the people in the town can get a fix on where the airplanes are, then that really gets us up to really the modern, the, the, the modern age of air traffic control. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can feel, it's a little hot up here. Yeah. And this is a relatively cool day. All right, so it gets, you're going to be putting some AC in here, I would imagine? Yes, with the restoration of this will be air conditioned. Uh -huh. Though it does sort of ruin one of my favorite stories from up here. Oh no, what is that? Well, during World War II, the Navy created uh, something called the WAGE, the Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service. Okay. And one of the positions that the women were filling were air traffic controllers. And the right. idea was this would free men up for combat. Right. So you had a bunch of men working up here in the tower. Uh -huh. And the first day that the waves came to work here in the tower, mm -hmm. um, it was a very, very hot summer day. Mm -hmm. And the men working up here had stripped down to their underwear. Ah. <laughs> so you have these brand new waves in their right. new uniforms come marching up the steps and they encounter a bunch of guys in their drawers. Oh no. So the lead wave apparently said, put your clothes back on. <laughs> And nobody moved. They all said, thank you, said, yeah, thank uh -huh, you very we'll much. See. Right. You'll see. Wow. Within a half hour, everybody was stripped down to their underwear, men and women. Oh, wow. So they spent the day <laughs> in the tower right. in their underwear. The next day, when everybody reported for work, they all showed up in uniform as normal. Uh huh. And as the day got warmer and warmer, everybody stripped down. Right. And under their clothes, they were all wearing bathing suits. Great idea. Nobody talked to anybody about it, but that's sort of how what happened. And right. I got that story from somebody who worked in the tower. Wow, wow, great storytelling. on, it was the best summer because they brought a grill out up on the roof. So you'd work two hours on, go hang out. They had chairs laying out. He said it was a great way to spend the second. Uh, on the on the roof that you just showed us, yes. right? Yeah. Wow, because I mean, it did. It looks like an entertainment space. I mean, it, well, that was um, one of the intentions when the building was first okay. built. It was built as an observation deck, right, for people to come and watch the planes take off and mm -hmm. land. Observation decks were very much a part of airport design, really into the '60s and '70s. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, great story. Okay, thank you. Features about Floyd Bennett Field. Um, they were getting very creative about how they moved people to and from the airplanes. In fact, one of the things that um, they came up with was a passenger loading tunnel. So, it, the idea was to keep people out of the prop wash, as they're getting on the planes, but also to keep people from getting hurt by these spinning propellers, which can really, really hurt you, if not mm -hmm. kill you. Mm -hmm. So, what they did was, they actually, in 1936, cut a hole in the floor here. So, if you take a look here, that's a solid concrete floor. Right. But, if you come okay. over here, Okay. It's hollow. Right. There's a staircase underneath here that leads to the tunnel that was covered over by the Navy. Okay, so they didn't need it or want it or... Right. They really okay. had no use for it, okay. so they just covered it up. Right. Well, it would be a good, you know, bad weather shelter, tornado shelter. So, uh, you know, if it ever got that bad. Well, <laughs> you know? I mean, they, they, had, they, they used it for, um, as a bomb shelter during the Second World War. It wasn't going to be terribly It wasn't really, <laughs> right, right. Well, you, you never know. Right, it was, right. the best thing you can say, it was underground, but you know, there wasn't much between you and the, and, and the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when the Air National Guard was here in the uh, 50s and 60s, they used the tunnel as a pistol range. 
Oh, ideal purpose for that. Yeah. <laughs> a little shooting practice. They just dumped a bunch of sandbags in yeah. there and off they went. Yeah, cool. Well, this lobby looks beautiful. This is um, part of the renovation that... Yes, this, um, this was restored back to the look uh, it would have had back in, say, 1935. Wow. We matched the paint and the stenciling exactly. Uh, the, um, the paintings up along the, the cornice are recreations of what was there originally. Originally what was uh, up there was uh, painted on canvas and glued onto the, onto the wall. These are painted directly on there. But everything else is pretty much an exact match of the, of the paint and the paint schemes that people would have seen as they walked in here to catch their flights in the 1930s. Wow, it's really beautifully done. Looks like a great job. Yeah, they, they did fantastic work. Yeah, I'm just glad I got to be part of the Yeah. Team. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Roll on out. Right, so you would enter here with oh, your... No, no, you don't, you, you, oh, no. The passenger would enter upstairs. Right, so this would this be is, like... Drop your bags. Oh, a, lu a luggage entrance. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the old... Um, this is sort of the, the Luggage. working end of the building. Okay, right, right. So you drop your, your bags off, they wheel them okay. here, and then out onto the tarmac and put them on the plane. Okay. Right. So no ba baggage carousel. No, no. No. <laughs> it's just like, did they have like, um, you had to just lug it, right? Or uh, use well, hand trucks or? Yeah, hand trucks or right. baggage carts. Okay. Or wow. So these are, these are the these are tunnels. These are. Well, this is the basement. This is the basement. Yeah, the tunnel oh, okay. is actually right this way. Oh, okay. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, tripped, o tripped over something there. Not an exit. Okay. Ooh, wow. Wow. These are the stairs that lead back up into the lobby. Okay, right. And oh, that's, wow. That's covered over. And maybe you should reopen this. We're going to. Oh, great. Yes. Oh, this is fabulous. I mean, this is yeah, we're, this we're is actually, wonderful. And you, you should be able to go right outside, right? Well, or What we're going to do is open up the... Uh, Open up the staircase. Right. Um, we're going to put the door, put the doors back in, and keep them closed for the time being. Oh, to just show that as an exhibit and stop it there. Right. And then right. If we ever get the money to do phase three, then right. we'll do the tunnel. Right. What goes on past here? Is this, is, does that go out to that thing you showed me with the yeah. circular? Yeah. And there were four gates, so it okay. went straight out and then teed off. And oh, tee off at e e oh I really hope you get the money to do this. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> that would just be so great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you could have some other kind of a, like a concession stand, like down in there or something to bring the traffic down in there or to have a, you, maybe you could go up to six gallery space or um, you, then maybe you could, if, if you, because you can gain access back to the outside, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you could have like tables out there <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, I will say this, having anything outside here can get tricky. With the wind and yes, the elements. It gets and very windy out. Well, you'd have to put it away at night, you know, like all the restaurants in Manhattan do that yeah. <laughs> anyway, right? Yeah. You know, they like put up the umbrellas and the tables for mm -hmm. like, you know, a dinner service and then they take it down. Yeah. Bring Gordon Ramsay out here and maybe <laughs> do some like food show or something. <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking of ways you could combine it and maybe do, you know, add something to it, you know, for, for tourism. Mm -hmm. Gordon Ramsay, England's greatest Brooklynite. Yeah. Is he a oh, no, just, he doesn't. Just, just his use of language. Right, all right, well, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, my friend. Right, well, <laughs> all right, well. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking what my people who, if I'm just using my imagination to see this open and going outside, mm -hmm. 
I guess you could have seating or something, you know, so that you could, once you made your journey through these tunnels, you could sort of hang out for a little while and then come back in. I don't know. Right, or just have that serve as sort of an alternative entrance into the building. Oh, that would be great too. That would be great. I love this um, that you have lighting here. It makes mm -hmm. a big, big difference. Yes. Okay, that is very beautiful. I love all this secret see where spots. The original light fixtures hanging from the ceiling. Okay, right there. Let me zoom in on that. That's just, um, I don't even see, okay, a bulb would, uh, like a big glass. A globe. A globe would, oh, how beautiful. Oh, that would be so nice. To keep something like that and just get, Absolutely. Yeah. you well, know. One of the things we do is wherever possible. You're going to keep yeah, something. We use, it, we use the original. Right. Okay. I don't know if my camera can... Yes, yeah, the lighting Focus. here is a little, little It's tough, funky, it's yeah. tough, but the camera is, does a pretty good job. Well, th this is a, an amazing space. Thank you so much for showing it to us. I'm glad to do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, here, let's give this back to Winkett. Okay, here we are in Link's office. This is my office. <laughs> yeah. Please forgive the mess. Oh, no problem. Um, this is Fred's temporary home. Okay. Um, yes, this is the piece that, that I donated. Yes, that Sylvie donated to us. Um, and actually, you did all the, the legwork on finding out. It was, yeah. it was a miracle, yes. It was um, the emblem for the 139th Military Air Service that flew out of Stratton Air Force Base sometime during the mid-1960s. Um, but the base is now called the 109th Air Wing. I don't know really it, how that... Uh, was it Military Airlift Service? Well, that was for the 139th, but now they call themselves the 109. I, I don't okay. know in, in today's terms, terminology, but... All that, all that means is um, that the Air Force changed designation. Okay. Yeah, and they're located in Schenectady, New York. As part of so, the New York Air National Guard. Right, right. And they found the airman who created this logo. And that's just an amazing story. As you can see, it's Fred Flintstone and it's being there. carried by four seagulls. Or are they pelicans? They're I, seagulls. I don't know what they're. They're very Hanna-Barbera looking. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Uh, he, he, they he are. very true to the, uh, to the original Hanna-Barbera artwork. Right, and maybe if I can zoom in on there, you can see... You can make, the, make out the shadow of the... The 139th MAS. MAS. Yep. All right, that's from a, the, a strato freighter or a big Boeing airplane. This, this is, it's hard to imagine the size of the airplane when you see this oh, little... You, you don't have to imagine it. it We're going to go see one. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. So we can give some definite perspective. Okay. Yeah, oh, and there's my goodies over there too, all the yes. goodies that I donated. Mm -hmm. And they're going to stay right there until... Um, you figure out what you, what you're well, going to do with it, right? Until we, until we know there's a, a good safe sp spot for them over in the hangar. Okay. Uh, hangar B did sustain a fair bit of uh, damage in, mm -hmm. in Hurricane Sandy, so right. um, a lot of restoration work is, is going to be going on there. Okay. Um, but, you know, the, 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 oh, that, that has not started yet, so... So we're sort of working around the damage right now. Okay. okay All so right. you want to go see some airplanes? Yeah. Let's okay, so this was, you said, was a prefabricated building? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this building was um, built out of prefabricated parts. Everything was trucked in. Right. Essentially what they did was they poured a brand new concrete floor. Uh-huh. And once it dried, they put the building up. So everything was brought in and put together. So okay, and you said it was built uh, what year? 1941. Okay. It was prior to the U.S. entry into World War II. 
Uh huh. And it was the home of the RF-4, which was a seaplane slash flying boat ferry squadron. Wow, we cool. Had three examples of flying boats in the hangar. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Action. All right. Let's go inside. And okay. We're see going some in. We're going into the hangar. And here we are. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. This Amazing. is Hangar B, the home of our historic aircraft restoration project. Oh, wow. Look at that. So this one's sort of... <laughs> Wow, this is this is huge. Yes. What is? Oh, this is your Catalina. That's the PBY. That's I recognize PBY. it because I photographed one out at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. In I'm guessing it looked a little better than this one. Yeah. Well, this one is cool because you just see its design and its mass, and it's. Of course, in a different position here. I like how you have it like leading off in the building here, like the doors open and it looks like it's just ready to go out. Yeah. It's very cool looking. It is. And you know, all, the, all the aircraft in here are in various stages of restoration. Mm -hmm. now, we do have some that are complete, uh, some are long term projects like PBY. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything in between. So it's it's really a uh, you know it's a, it's a long term project, and the idea is that all of the aircraft in here are going to help us tell the story of Floyd Bennett Field from the time as the municipal airport in the golden age of flight through the Second World War and the Cold War. So that's. Mm. That's the purpose of all of this. Well, great. Well, I certainly um, helped you in the Cold War Department. Uh, yes, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to be getting to that. Yes, we are. Okay, good. All right, well, beautiful, uh, fantastic. Um, so we'll just follow you around. Okay. Let's just keep rolling and, and um, this here, is this for painting, this uh, compressor here? Is this for paint, for, um, for, 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 sp for spraying? For, um, for all sorts of, for everything. For filling tires or for? Anything um, that you need compressed air. Compressed air, air. okay. And there's certainly Fabulous, fabulous. And you say the ceiling heights here are 50 feet. Yeah. Okay, spectacular. It's a spectacular space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we're just we're just gonna follow you around. Let's, let's start at the wing. Oh, you want to start there? Yeah. Is it nearby? No, it, it's all the way down the other end. Oh, that okay. We can work our way back. Okay, we're, so we're gonna cut. Rolling. Okay, there we are. Okay. Um, actually, um, I'm gonna. Okay, so these these two planes are finished. The um, yellow and and um, yeah, that one behind there. Uh, well, this one right here too. Oh, this one. Okay. And both are World War II era trainers. Okay. Excellent. Now, when you call this the goose, is this the one, is this named after the one that Howard Hughes? No, no, no. this is Bruce this Goose. Yeah, that, that was actually not a name that Howard Hughes was terribly fond of either. Okay. Uh, the, the real name of that aircraft that he preferred was the Hercules. Oh, nobody called it that. No. This, <laughs> this however, was the Grumman Goose. The Grumman. Yes. Okay. Well, they named their flying boats after waterfowl. So you had the Grumman Goose, okay. the Grumman Duck, the Grumman Widgeon. Right. Right. The but Mine on was the Scorpion. So they they moved into insects. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that, and that was for their flying boat series. Okay. So, you know, and their fighters, they had the Hellcat and the Wildcat. Right. So. Okay. But the Goose was a, uh, a flying boat. And okay. the reason it's in the NYPD colors is because 
They flew a Grumman Goose back in the uh, late 40s and early 50s here out of Floyd Bennett Field. Mm -hmm. And it was the last flying boat that they operated before they switched over to helicopters. Oh, okay. And since their NYPD is still here, we figure we probably should have a representation. Oh, it's great. I mean, if, especially if it's the last one. I mean. Okay, so we're in the, we found wings. Are those our, um, this is the you say? This rear stabilizer. The rear stabilizer, yeah, rear. right. For this plane? Yes. Okay. And this is also a, a Grumman. Oh, nice. Okay, Ni tractor. nice uh, cohesion. There's my airplane wing. There it is. There it is. Wow. On the... Uh, well, at least you keep your Grumman's together. Right. right? <laughs> that, that's a nice the thing. The Grumman's side. Right, and they, they are, have a big similarity here with um, oh, yeah, yeah. the shapes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks pr pretty similar to what we've got going here. Yeah. Well, one of the great things about Grumman as, a, uh, as an aircraft manufacturer when they found something that worked, they stuck with it. You know, they, they weren't constantly trying to re-engineer everything. Mm -hmm. you know, what, they, they, what they were always trying to do is improve on what they already had. Right. And that's one of the reasons why all of their aircraft is, is so rugged. <laughs> the, the nickname of the, uh, the factory is the Grumman Ironworks, and with good reason. Yeah. So what kind of aircraft is, is this one here? This, this so you say, is a Northrop, this one here? Well, it's a Grumman, a uh, Grumman uh, Tracker. Uh, okay. It was built originally as a aircraft carrier-based anti-submarine patrol aircraft. Um, okay. It had, um, yeah, it had the folding wings and the whole deal. This one yeah. has folding wings? Yes. So the wings wow. can fold up for easy storage on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Okay. Uh, because of its size and configuration, the Navy ended up using it for several different types of roles on an aircraft carrier, from its intended anti-submarine patrol use to weather plane to it would serve as a taxi between the carrier and land. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of different, a lot of different uses. It was a very, very good, valuable airplane, and it was a plane that operated out of Floyd Bennett Field too, back in the uh, 1960s. Mm-hmm. Cool. So it's sort of like this is like a rough sketch right now. Yes. Like, but it seems to be in the right area. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, are these going to get attached to this yeah. aircraft? Yeah, these, these okay. go right over there. Right, right above where it says Navy. Okay. All right. And, and this is, this is all the same plane here? The, yeah. this, it's just in, it's like cut in half. Well, it's in pieces. Okay. I've never seen anything quite. That's how we got it. In, in sections. Yeah. Okay, wow, that's going to be quite stunning yes. when it gets assembled. <laughs> well, when it's assembled and checked out and painted and, yeah, you know, all, all the planes in here arrive here in some state of disrepair or another. Mm hmm And They've all been, you know, they're, they're all either being worked on or they've been completed. Okay. Well, let's walk around a little bit and see this, because I'm not, from this angle, I'm not really getting that, the, that this is the same. I'm a little confused. Okay. Yeah, so this, when you put these two together, this is going to be like go all the way out 
to here somewhere, right? No, no. That's, no? That's... Let me walk around because, Tom, can you come with me? Oh, okay. All right. Wow, you've got something big back there. Yes, we do. Okay, we can't go around this. We have to go around the... the other, other okay, area. I'm rolling a little bit here just to get this. This is. This looks like an airplane onto itself, but you're saying this is the... Yeah, that's, that's the, one of the rear, rear, rear stabilizer package. Okay. The, you know, the, okay. The rear elevator, and that fits right onto the back of the plane. Okay. So that would and go. There's my airplane wing back there. Right up here. Okay. And then you have the. Then you'd have the rudder go so right up there. Right. What are all these? Um, is this fuel um, fuel lines? No. These, what what is it? This, Air intake. What is it? It's these are actually the holders for what are called sauna buoys. Right. And a sauna buoy is something that you drop into the water, okay. which are sending out sonar signals to try and detect submarines underwater. Oh. Okay. So you drop the sauna buoys out into the water, and then uh, the crew here on the on the tracker would be listening to what the sauna buoys were sending out, and you'd know where you dropped them. So if you had a hit, then you could fly back and do what you needed to drop do. a bomb. Or something. <laughs> if that's it. Right. What you were gonna do, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going around. Wow, look at this. Yep. That's pretty impressive. That's your Boeing Stratofreighter. Oh, wow. So that's where Fred Flintstone yeah. was up yeah. on the nose somewhere. Yeah, Fred would have come off. Somewhere. Okay. Nice. Where did, you, where did you get it? It actually belongs to the Berlin Airlift Historical Foundation. Okay. And they are going to fly it out of here. Oh, I would love to be here when, when they do that. Well, you'll have to let me know. I will definitely when, to What know. time of year do they do that? Not during the winter, I would imagine. No, but they're hoping, they're restoring this plane to flyable condition. And okay. when it's done, it will be a flying museum. Oh, dedicated excellent. Dedicated to the Berlin Airlift. So okay. we'll fly to air shows all around the country. Okay. And there'll be exhibits on board telling right. about uh, what happened during the Berlin Airlift. Okay, so, um, so it's not airworthy now? Not yet, but it will be. And, it, and it, before it takes off, it's going to have to pass an FAA inspection. Okay. Um, so where did you they they donated it and it was here or no 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 they purchased it okay so where did you find it where did oh, you they found it oh they found yeah. it um, so they found it here no 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 they found it in Wyoming and they flew it in here so okay so it was airworthy then yes. barely or yeah so they, they just about e eked it in here and brought it here they called you up. Well, we had a part. We, we have a partnership agreement with uh, with the Berlin Airlift Historical Foundation, um, where we where Hangar B served as sort of their winter home. They have another aircraft, which is a, a Douglas C fifty four, um, that they also fly around the country. So um, this is going to be their second airplane, and you know they. They have found a much better situation for themselves down in Florida. So once uh, the C-97 leaves, then unfortunately we're not going to have it to show off anymore. Really? Yeah, I'm going to miss this big old beast. Oh, no. So... So this this one, once they get it, or or was it this one here, once they get it flyable, flying, mm -hmm. they're not coming back here. 
They're going to fly. They're, they're going to basically work out of Florida from now on. Mm. And what's their rationale for that? Is it just um, a better yeah, cost, ease of maintenance? Uh huh. Most of the air shows that they uh, they they go to are down south. Right. Well, the weather is better. Although the salt is not good, right? The salt air. Just, just as bad here. It's just as bad here. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, this is really something. And this is a uh, a KC ninety seven Stratifrider. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is or the Stratatanker. Stratatanker. KC. Right. So. It's got the clamshell doors back here. Oh yes, yeah. so, like, show us. You, see that, you can sort of make out the hinge there. Okay, right, got and it. And that opens up, and then the boom would come out the back, so you could do the aerial refueling. Oh wow, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this propeller is cool back here, just sort of sitting here like that. Mm -hmm. One of the really cool things about the C-97 is that, well, the C-97 family is it's based entirely on the B-29. Right. You know, the wings, the tail section, engines, landing gear, cockpit, yeah, all it, of it is B-29. I mean, essentially just added a second fuselage to it. Mm-hmm. Now, when this is done, it's going to be one of three flying C-97s. That's not very many. I mean, even the one, if they have one at Wright-Patterson, it's not flying, is it? No, I don't think they flies. Okay. Yeah, they, they sort of use the same standard that we've adopted. Right. Um, you don't want to fly old aircraft if you can avoid it, because once they're gone, they're gone. Right. So, so if something happens, you've lost. You've lost it. Uh, for whatever, for historical as well as, right. you know, whatever the accident, whatever it might be, yeah. that might cause the airplane to be lost. Hmm. But since this is a wow. privately owned plane, right? They can fly. Okay. So. How many of all the aircraft that are here, how many are owned by private individuals? No, just this one. Just this one. So right. everything else here is yours that you've acquired in a variety of, of right. means. Yeah, they, the, the planes either belong to the National Park Service or they belong to the, the Department of the Navy, meaning the Navy or Marine Corps, and they're here on permanent loan. <laughs> permanent loan. Permanent loan. The, the Navy doesn't get rid of their airplanes. They own them forever. So they, you know, they'll do a permanent loan agreement, but they won't ever give it away. Well, they can't. I mean, right? I yeah, mean, well, no, you, know. There actually is, you know. There's a mechanism where they can. I mean, they can be surplused out. Right. But they don't do that. Right. You know, the, the Air Force does that, but not the, uh, not the Navy. Right. Like my Scorpion, for example, that was decommissioned and broken up. I mean, right. they didn't. Right. Well, and but the, they. Yeah, the Navy will do that. They'll scrap. Right. Scrap, but. You know, if they hang on to it, they own it. Right. If they've, you know, put the money into mm -hmm. keeping it around. Well, basically anything that anything here that says Navy on it, the Navy still owns. Okay. But we're putting the money into the restoration. Right. So that's why it's a permanent loan. <laughs> right. In, in theory, they can come and take take their planes back anytime they want to. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they're they're busy keeping the their their flying yeah, their current done. squadrons. They're busy enough with those. Right. Yeah, I'm they, they have sure they they it's in good hands here. So Yeah, they're not looking they're not looking for old airplanes. They're looking for new. Right. <laughs> the the latest and the greatest. Yeah. 
Well, great. Is there anything else back here that we should see? Um, well, the, or the front of the airplane? Oh yeah, let's go up to the front. Okay, we're we're working our way towards the front of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And there's the cockpit. Okay, yeah, it does. It has has that um, boxcar appearance, right? Yes. The B twenty nine in all its glory. I mean, that is really going to be something when that is airborne. Yes. That is really going to be something. Look at those engines. My goodness. What kind of engines are those? They are, oh, I hope I say it right, that they're right 30, 3200s. Okay. That's I'm gonna wow. <laughs> like, where is the prop for this one? Is is, uh, is that it over there? That's, over, that's, that's over, over there. Okay, so that's where that prop came from. Let's just, there it is. So it's just over there because the engine needs work. Yeah, they're working on the engine. They're working on the engine. Okay. Yep, no more propeller driven air, they don't make these, The uh, it's all jets now, right? Yeah. Like the Scorpion. There, there are a few short hop propeller driven um, air, passenger aircraft that are still being built. Okay, um, look at that. What I is that? Is that an engine cowling? Yes. Okay. This is a pretty good view right here. Yeah, it gives you, it gives you a real idea of the scale of this. Yeah, thing. it's big. Yeah, it, and, and the scary thing is, it's big when you're standing next to it, but it's not big if you compare it to airliners that we have now. I know. Oh, there's a little headlight there. Yep. A couple headlights. Mm -hmm. You got the radar dome in the front here. Where's the radar dome? The black thing right here. Oh, this. Yeah. Okay, I'm too close. Okay, and that's for um, picking up radar or for sending. That's that's to to receive. Know what's in the air around you. Oh, it, it senses what is around you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's odd looking. You know, it is. Well, yeah. I mean, when the plane was designed, though, it wouldn't have been there. They added it. Yeah, that's a later addition. Right. The B, this is based on the B-29 right. bomber. It had that rounded... Right, sure, like boxcar. Right, so the, this, this whole lower deal going on here is they added that. Oh, no, no, no. They just, the just, just the ray. Oh, they added the upper part. Yeah, the upper fuselage. Okay. Essentially what they did was they cut the top off of the B-29. Right. And then stuck a second fuselage on top of that. <laughs> It's weird looking. It is. <laughs> but this is something that really is going to surprise you is that underneath, this is essentially what a modern airliner looks like. Mm -hmm. the, the sides are covered over and it's got the, you know, the, the nose that we're all familiar with. Mm -hmm. But underneath, it's essentially the same. Kind of look, because you know underneath <laughs> on a uh, on a modern airliner, that's what you get the baggage and cargo compartment, and above yep. that is the the passenger. This that's is the same it. thing. Wow. Cool. So when are they going to be finished with it? 
Uh, they are looking to uh, fly out of here sometime in the spring or early summer of next year. Okay. And how often do they, like there, there doesn't seem to be anyone working on it today, for example. How often are people actually working on it? Whenever they can. Okay. But, and these and are... again, this is, all, this is all being done by volunteers. Okay. So, you know, the people who work on this plane have day jobs. Right. So whenever they can, uh, whenever they can get Right. Over and here, and the, 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 um, the, the, um, you said it's owned by who? The Berlin? The Berlin Airlift Historical Foundation. Okay. So they know that your volunteers are the ones that are. Oh, no, no, no. They have their own volunteers. Oh, they have their, okay. Yes. So these are not and your hangar B volunteers. No. These are their own volunteers. Right. And the, Okay. There has I, been some cross pollination. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. No, I didn't realize. Okay, I was, you know, because volunteers, I just assume that they're hangar B volunteers, but um, these, um, this historical group has their own volunteers. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's not anybody here working on it. Um, and so much work to do. I mean, it seems when they come in, when they do come insurmountable. In, they, they, well, they come in on the weekends. A lot. They come in on the weekends. And they'll spend 10, 12 hours working on working on the plane. Well, it looks like they have a lot to do. I mean, I have that cockpit. I wouldn't want to fly in that right now, Actually, right? Inside it looks fine. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you've been in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to try to talk him into taking me on the first flight. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Well, that would be spectacular. I mean, this this when it flies out of here will give you a lot of good publicity. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, in 2007, we did a, a fly-in, a historical aircraft, mm -hmm. um, and it was great because I think we had 35, 40 different airplanes fly into the field for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And they were on the ground, and you'd walk up and look at them and get tours, but it was great to listen to the uh, air traffic controllers over the JFK Tower. Mm -hmm. as the planes were flying in, because they, you know, were sharing the same airspace. So mm -hmm. you, you'd, hear the, you'd hear them constantly, and they'd call out, you know, just, you know, for, for the sake of argument, uh, you know, Kennedy Tower to TBM Avenger, requesting <laughs> a flyby. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so was like, those guys, they're all aviation nuts like us, too. So okay. they really see these things up close. I know, I know. <laughs> it's fabulous. Well, and oh, and the other thing, you could hear the airline chatter. Oh, you know, and they'd, they'd look down and say, Hey there, is that a Hellcat? <laughs> yeah, like, no, I yeah. mean, it looks like a B 20. At a, at a quick glance, if you were flying anywhere in the vicinity, you'd think it was a B 29, maybe. Sure, I mean, bomber, or a, depending on where you are, right, standing next to the airplane. right. What's this emblem they have painted on the side? What is this like a? Is that a, a like a wing it's, it's type? It's a stylized of? wing. Okay. That's pretty common on the uh, United States Air Force. So they got this in Wyoming. Where where did you say the Berlin Historical Society found it? They got it. This was uh, being used as an aerial firefighter. And they got it in Gray Bull, Wyoming. Uh, like Why how did do I know Gray Bull, oh, Wyoming? E e because I've been there. Oh, okay. Uh, right. And it, they have forest fires and they have yeah. to yeah, deal with them. out there that operates the aerial firefighters. Uh huh. So when they retired this as an aerial firefighter, they sold it to the uh, Berlin, Airlift, Berlin Airlift Historical Foundation. Mm-hmm. Wow. So would it carry water? Is that yeah. what it would be carrying? 
And it's or fire the target. Okay. Wow. Fly over these big western forest fires and do the drops off. Okay, I just want to get a close up of that engine. I mean, it looks like that thing is, like, would never work again, but I mean, I'm sure they're, what are they doing to it? What, it just needs, all the, the uh, lines need to be checked and yeah. they um, the, need the carburation and. Right, um, make sure there aren't any leaks, make sure all the hoses. Right, are, right, I mean, is, this, this one looks, like it was in in better shape this engine and they didn't need to take the prop off actually that they've all had the prop off at one uh, okay they all look pretty i mean they look rugged when they they look started. rugged that's a good word to describe the, the way they look so yeah and that's the air intake that scoopy yep okay Wow, pretty impressive. I mean, I hear the big cowlings. I'm stand. I'm not really. Let me see if I can get those cowlings. Are just sort of here. They're marvelous. The cowlings. Yeah. They're they're just really <laughs> kind of cool. It gives you a real good idea of just how big. And what what are these little parts here? These um, things on the table. I don't know. Okay. Um, I think they are. Best guess, there's some kind of uh, air filter. Okay. Yeah. Here's their little workbench. Mm -hmm. They've got going on. Well, it just seems like so much work. Oh, to there, do. There's plenty of work. Oh wow. And it's so quiet. It's it's just seems kind of ironic. Okay. You know, again, it's all volunteers, so right. you know, they, they do it when they can. Okay. And they have, have to keep body and soul together too. Okay. Cool. Okay. Ramp. Okay, we're rolling. It's out in the back of the C-97. Okay, use your mic link. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I decided since this was so cool. Okay, um, the the um, olive-colored stuff is the ramp from okay. the back of the C-97. For, for this? Yeah. Okay, so they didn't want it. I don't know what they're doing with it. Because <laughs> be it looks like they've cut it out. I mean, I don't yeah, think there, there, there's no going back with with something. This looks like my airplane wing. This. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what they've. What Some they've done cowlings, with. you know. Or pieces of cowling, anyway. I mean, I, I can think of many sculptors who would love to get their hands on some of this stuff. It's just very cool stuff. Yeah. It looks like they're going to throw it out, is what it looks like. Um, yeah, it does. I don't know what they're going to do with it. They I may, think they may you be scrapping could, it. I'd say calling all sculptors, calling all sculptors. Well. <laughs> um, this would be... Let's find out what the owners are doing with it. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, right, right. Well, it looks like they're throwing it out. Well, it looks like it, but it ain't okay. outside yet. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, I, I see. Okay, well, in its entirety. Just a cool little cut there. Craft. Okay. Uh, and it's based on the famous Beach 18, which is one of the most successful planes ever built. You know, it's been used as a light airliner in private use. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was built by Beechcraft from the 1930s up until the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a great airplane. And of course the military used it um, during the Second World War, but even afterwards, because it was just such a useful aircraft. Yeah, the uh, tail piece is unusual. It doesn't have that big vertical 
member. No, it's got. Uh, I guess it has the twin. Right. Tint. Twin. Okay, yeah. on the interesting design. They don't really make this design anymore, do they? No, no. Most uh, most planes today have the, uh, okay. the single single vertical. Okay, band. we're we're out of tape. Okay. Tape is out. Okay, we're rolling. Okay, well, yeah, the uh, you know the Beechcraft. It's sort of a general purpose airplane, but it's it's so well made, so well designed. Right, who makes it? Uh, Beechcraft. Oh, okay, that. Okay. Quantico. Yes. Is that where it was stationed? Yes, this uh, this plane came out of Naval Air, or, I'm sorry, Marine Corps Air Station Quantico. Okay. Um, and that's Cuba? Where no, is it? Virginia. Virginia, I'm sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm sorry. Oh wow! Look at this cutaway here. This is well, this actually, is that's amazing. The cowling. That's the, the, the design of the cowling. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, so that just does that. That yes. just opens up. Yeah. So you don't have to remove it. It just opens. Okay. And what aircraft are we looking at here? This is a Lockheed P2V Neptune which was an, uh, a Cold War era anti-submarine patrol aircraft. Okay, so this is the same era as, as my Scorpion. Yes. Okay. This is actually just a little earlier in okay. terms of its design. It's the only land-based bomber ever designed for the Navy. And that came out of an argument between the Army Air Force and the Navy during the Second World War over who should be flying anti-submarine patrols. And the Navy was saying, we need bombers, namely the, uh, the B-24 Liberator, to fly anti-submarine patrols. Of course, the Air Force said, no, we need them for strategic bombing. Mm -hmm. and the compromise was, okay, you'll get to design a land-based bomber. And it, continued, it, it first flew in 1945, it arrived too late to take part in the war, but it uh, continued in service up until 1981. Wow. Yeah. Very good airplane. Later on, they added the jets, which you see here, it's sort of an unusual design. It's got jets. And props. And props. Okay, and is that the anti-bird device there, the uh, red piece in the intake? Yeah, well, that actually would come off in fl before you, before okay. you take off. That's strictly for for the ground. Okay, but what's the function of that? That to, to keep birds. In oh, okay, all right, it. okay. I was on I was on the right track with oh, that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, because they're sucking in a lot. Oh, you, you could probably well, even, even if it's not, you know, if you have, if it's just sitting on the ground and you have lots of different types of birds. A bird might that, might say, "Hey, that cool I could make a nest here." Yeah. Which could, re you know, once you start up the engines, it could really gum things up. Oh yeah. Okay. So I was on the right track. Yes. With that. Okay. Right. So this is a turbine engine of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 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 a uh, small general general electric jet. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the. Piston driven prop up here. Mm -hmm. I'm doing some super close ups. And of course, you know, for those engine mavens out mm -hmm. there. The gearheads. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I know them well. Yeah. Well, I'm from the Motor City, so. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> you know, this is, this is big. Okay. Okay. okay, great. Ron became more of a, an electronic warfare platform. Mm -hmm. but, oh, you know, wow. early, you know, early on, the way you looked for submarines was staring down at the water, making S turns. Oh boy. Cool. Oh yeah, tell me about this. this. That's a Hellcat, right? No, it's actually no, it's, it, a P something. it's a it's a Texan SNJ, uh, which was built by North American, and it was a uh, 
He was a World War II advanced trainer. Mm -hmm. A lot of these planes were built, and so what, which one's the fighter that looks like this on the aircraft well, carriers the, the, that were painted blue? And the P fifty one. Well, does that have no? Um, I don't know if it had folding wings. No, it didn't. Um, the ones on you're saying ones on the aircraft carrier on an aircraft carrier with folding wings. You had the Corsair, you, Corsair. Had, you had the Hellcat, the Wildcat. Mm -hmm. We don't have any of those, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that one you've got over there, The uh, like that jet fighter over there? That is a Douglas A4B Skyhawk. That's pretty evil looking. Yeah. Um, that's the first jet attack aircraft that the Navy flew. Uh-huh. And it looks like it would go pretty fast, it's you know. It's just under supersonic. I would say Mach 1. You're just shy of that. Okay. Uh, first flew in 1954. Mm-hmm. And it, um... You know, well, it de definitely used uh, during Vietnam, you know, mm -hmm. very extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still flying with several air forces today. You know, we don't fly it anymore, but you know, it's it's a great airplane. Very mm -hmm. tough. Um, it looks it. I like the design. It's yeah, although it, the pilot is almost on the nose of the aircraft. Almost on the nose, and he's got the engine right in his rear end too. Oh. You know, basically, that's just a big engine with a chair. Right. You know, it could, it could carry mm -hmm. a lot of ordnance. Right. So, and it was, you know, but it needed to be small because it was carrier-based. Right. So, you know, there was certainly plenty of them. Looks very it. agile. Yes, you know. it was. Uh-huh. Interesting. Was what? The A4B Skyhawk. Okay. Built by Douglas. Oh, it's got John K U.S. Oh, it flew on the USS John F. Kennedy. Yes. Oh, that's so. Where? How'd you get that one? Um, that actually was here as a gate guard. What that means? They had the a, a plane stationed at the entrance. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And you brought it inside, right? Just to keep it in good condition, or. Right, and you restore know, it. And right. It. That one isn't going to fly again, though, right? No. no. <laughs> well, that's a great example. That's a lovely asset in, mm -hmm. in your collection. Yeah. Really very nice. Yeah, no. One of your most modern planes. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd say it's... That is the most modern. Yeah. What, what um, time frame, what year would you say that would be, like, 1970s, maybe? I'd say probably more 60s. Okay, so that's like my, my Scorpion is in there on that on that time frame. Yeah, well, th this was in the 60s. This was being used in frontline combat. In okay, Vietnam. yeah, this was defense in, in Alaska or something, right? The yeah, Scorpion. Right. When this is the this is the plane that John McCain was flying when he was uh, shot down over Hanoi. Okay, that really paints a picture, doesn't it? Yeah. So that gives you a very definite time frame. Yeah, so when are you going to get an F 89J Scorpion? <laughs> you have one? <laughs> <laughs> only, only the part that I have, which may be the only piece of a Scorpion in New York State. I'm I would guess that's a pretty safe bet. Because there's one in Connecticut. There's a, a full plane in, in Connecticut okay. at, at that, I, I forget, the New England Air Force Museum. Oh, up by Bradley? In, Windsor Locks, Windsor Connecticut. Locks. Yeah, that's Br uh, Bradley Airport. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they have an entire scorpion outside. Oh, okay. But as far as New York State, I don't think there is anything. So. Unless there's... You know, at least you've got a piece of one. Right. Yeah. You know. I'm, I'm, well, you know, unless uh, you Criminal know. Aviation has something somewhere. I, I know that um, Selfridge Air Force Base in Michigan just put a scorpion out okay. outside. Looks pretty good. Yeah. It does. I mean, I know the plane so well. I mean, it was, <laughs> I got to know it just from having one little piece of it. Right, yeah. I got to know the design of it and the engines. And 
and everything. Well, where do you think it will ultimately? Do you, do you have a hunch where it might go? I, I think it looks kind of good over there, but I mean, it's a little hidden away. Well, it is, and you know, once work starts on the tracker, on the tracker, nearby the tracker. Well, yeah, but once work starts on it, then we're gonna move it away from there so right. they have room to work on the plane. Right. So I'm guessing this way. Okay, yeah, show us. Here. I mean, this is kind of a cool spot. You know, this is, this is well, kind of cool. Th this would be a good area for it just because it's, it would be... Contextually, yeah. it's a Cold War. Right. It's a Cold Warrior. This is a Cold Warrior. Okay. Right. And it has the beautiful emblem, too. Yeah. Which that has. And it wouldn't... Yeah, this 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 would be... I'll have to come back when... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'm going to become one of your frequent visitors. Careful. These guys are going to try to recruit you. Oh, well.